But several years ago, was, I had this tiny fear to come. I'm pretty sure it's not here. Not a student. He came to work for me as you background. He was putting his years sitting and learning. And he was a very conscientious guy. I got to know him a little bit. So when I said in class, when it comes to the rule against perpetuities, use your imagination, he wrote down in his notebook, use your imagination. And I get back this final exam from the student. And the final exam says, imagine there was time travel. <laughs> that was clever. First of all, follow the rule. It uses imagination. It was very clever. It was even virtuosically clever. It was playful. And it was completely wrong. Right? I flunked him on, I didn't flunk on the exam. I flunked him on the question. He got no credit for this. Because it was the wrong kind of imagination. Right? He didn't imagine in the right way. He imagined in the wrong way. My job is to teach him to be a lawyer. To be a lawyer, you have to imagine the way that lawyers are supposed to imagine, and not the way that lawyers are not supposed to imagine. This, the widow, or the children, or the grandchildren, they inherit, or they do not inherit. We don't have room to keep wondering about whether they inherit or they don't inherit. Someone gets rich, someone loses out. I need to know who. To need to know who, I need to know what kinds of imagination are required and what kinds are not allowed. So therefore, my student imagined in the wrong way. I took off a lot of points from his exam. I explained to him. Next time, imagine in the right way, and I expect he's out there now practicing law, imagining in the right way, which was my goal in the first place. <laughs> so, this leaves me with, uh, I hope leaves me with some sense about why I am nervous in my personal religious life, which is not of interest to anyone but me, but is as a professional about the rabbinic method, right? Because when you credit imagination and you apply to the text a vision of its vast plasticity, you get to alarming answers sometimes. So there are some saving graces. I want to say what they are, and I will sit down. One, combined with this kind of method, you need professional judgment, right? If I say imagine, you have to know what I mean. What does it mean to be in the, um, the community of imagination that trusts and estate lawyers belong to? It means to imagine that an 80-year-old woman could have a baby, but not to imagine a time machine. Tight enough to know that. Right? We all have to know that about one another. In American Judaism and in some fields of American law, we are so driven and so pluralist that we don't have a community of imagination. And without a community where we understand what it means to imagine right and what it means to imagine wrong, this kind of virtuosity is particularly dangerous. Two, you need to have a structural constitution that goes with your interpretive methods. There has to be a way to accept or reject interpretations that are too rigid, too high bound, too fundamentalist, and too crazy, too off the